So now I'm going to touch upon teacher-parent engagement. Um, it's super important that teachers communicate with parents, and typically the forms of communication are uh, conferences, back-to-school night, report cards, weekly newsletters, especially for the younger kiddos, teachers giving um, parents homework policies, uh, give and students giving parents how to uh, how to along with their child's homework because parents today are totally not used to the way the curriculum is. Um, it's so different and everything is so different with Common Core. Um, encouraging parents to utilize community resources like the museums and libraries, and it is also like really important that. We have to show that we care about all of our students, not just those who are advanced, not just those kids who are in the middle, or and not just those kids who are at risk, all of them. Um, for parents, the parents must work with their child at home. They have to be in contact with the teacher, promote learning at home, whether it be reading, um, practicing math facts, whatever it is, um, and foster social skills, basic skills, and enrichment for their children. So now the question is, how do we as educators incorporate technology so it does not take over for us, and how do we do this in order to reach at-risk students? So according to one of the articles I read, there are three variables that have been researched and proven to help students um, who are at risk um, with technology, and it is it, their interactive learning, using technology to explore and create, and uh, the teacher and technology, not just technology. So for interactive learning, uh, programmed instructional technology has proven to be more successful in this article that I read, um, with teachers guiding the instruction, helping explain things when needed, and coordinating student discussion, it will better promote student understanding of learning concepts. Um, it identifies student understanding of concepts and where they are in the curriculum, and it caters to those student needs, and it gears the material that they are learning to where they're at so they can't move on until they've mastered the material. It's super engaging. It gives students and teachers detailed feedback, and it can be used for all content areas. Um, you can have maps. We have uh Digital field trips, which are super cool, videos, hyperlinks to definitions, and then these multiple modes allow for opportunities for students to grasp more difficult concepts by interacting directly with the content and material. So now I'm going to touch on using technology to explore and create. So students are definitely more engaged. Um, they're more self-sufficient when they use technology for this. Uh, they have more positive attitude towards school because they like to do and go to school and use the technology. They can engage in different multimedias to make reports, make or use graphics, use different websites, make PowerPoints, Prezi's, make their own videos and digital storytelling, which I will um, touch on Storybird after. Um, and with this, scaffolding is really important, especially for students who are at risk. Um, teaching students how to get through a string of complex activities that build on one another, um, it can be really important since these texts that they are reading and the things that they're interacting with are non-linear, so it's not something they're used to. Um, scaffolds can totally include storyboards, graphic images, simulating imagination, um, helping with retention of important information. Um, and their motivation is overall increased when students can apply what they're learning to their home lives, culture, and their interests. So like I just mentioned with Storybird, it's a website for digital storytelling. I was introduced to this in my undergrad, and I actually utilized it for a project. Um, there's totally different, a, ton, a ton of different animations. Um, students create their own stories, and it allows students to think creatively while still tending to the curriculum. And it's very important to promote creativity in today's classrooms, especially giving students at risk and all students in a creative outlet. And last but not least, there's teacher and teachers and technology. So well, this article mentioned one-to-one -one access, which meant one computer per student. And research supports that this helps students who are in low socioeconomic situations since they may not have these means at home. And it increased student likelihood to interact with the writing process, um, utilize and practice research skills, and develop multimedia skills. Um, teachers must also interact with their students while they're using the technology. Don't let the computer take over your job. We don't want to sit there and kick our feet back and just let these students uh, do a string of work and a bunch of assignments online. You want to facilitate the activities. 
monitor what they're doing because they could be messing around on there. Help students along the way, um, which will encourage them to problem solve. And let make some assignments, group assignments, to promote peer interaction. Um, we've heard it a lot. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, so, and promoting social interaction amongst our students developmentally is always good. Um, and tiered grouping can be totally good in this situation, too, to get different minds and students working together to complete a task. So here are my references if you guys wanted to check out any of the articles that I read for at-risk students. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope it shed a little more light on how you guys will be able to help those students in your classroom who are at risk. Thank you for watching.